listen i keep telling you people that the ruf was financed by a very big mining company that had mechanized diamond mining in Sierra a British company operating there. Taylor had no money to support his own government or his own military than to go and use his government money to pay hundred and something thousand RUF soldiers. RUF had more money than Taylor. RUF had more money than Taylor and Fortis Sanko used to send gifts to his friend. I can tell you that. What kind of gifts? Diamonds? No, I don't know whether they were diamonds, but I know they were sending the nice watches sometimes. He will always, whenever someone is coming from over there, or librarian goes there, or to Ivory Coast when he was... I remember one time I went to Ivory Coast to visit uh, Robert Gay, and Fordy Sanger was there, and he told him, he said, I got a, a Rolex watch for you that I bought in Switzerland. And he gave him the watch, and I was shocked. He said, man, where Fordy get that kind of money from? You know, but I'm just saying to do that, RUF, Fordy Sanger, when he entered Sierra Leone, it was automatic. Sierra Leone is bigger than Liberia. He had more money. There were more diamond business they were doing over there and financing themselves, and the British diamond uh, company was there. Financing the RUF to make sure that they protected. Who employed the services of executive outcome from South Africa? That was, do you know that? It was a diamond, drilling, a diamond processing company in Sierra Leone. At one point, they were processing and, uh, uh, their diamond, and then they, uh, they, when they were taking their diamonds to the, to the, to the, the ship or the plane, the RUF rebel used to, to ambush uh, 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 the vehicle and take the diamonds from them. And so they employed the services of executive outcome, a paramilitary South African group that had helicopter gunship to protect their diamonds by air as they carried them to the airport and to the seaport. That was a diamond drilling company operating in, in, in Freetown. That's how they, they financed the RUF. No one wants to talk about this. It's a very serious matter. They were operating a full-scale mechanized diamond uh, uh, processing thing in Dumbo and other places in, in Sierra Leone under the RUF. I mean, most people do not have this information. Look at another information that I will give you. You're asking questions about that. They call something blood diamond. Look, during the fall of the Russian Empire, and I want to educate you a little bit. During the fall of the Russian Empire, many wealthy Russians came from Eastern Europe into Western Europe with a lot of diamonds and, and precious stones. Because they came into Western Europe, they declared those diamond stones and uh, uh, precious stones from Liberia and Sierra Leone with fake diamond and user certificates. A very important facet of international trade. And the false declaration of huge quantities of diamond from the, Europe, from the, from, from the Eastern Bloc sold into Western Europe raised eyebrows. Now, why did they declare the diamonds from Liberia and Sierra Leone? Because these are, Liberia and Sierra Leone are diamond regions and they were at war. So there was no way of following or regulating the, uh, uh, how much diamond came from Liberia or Sierra Leone. So they ended up with false end user certificate, false declaration of huge consignment of diamonds that were sold in Western Europe. That is why you hear sometimes the say, Chatterer got three, four billion dollar worth of diamond. This was diamond that was falsely declared by Eastern European, wealthy Eastern Europeans in, uh, in, in, in Western Europe. They declared that. Now, for you to understand what I'm talking about, you have to understand the complexity of the, the collapse of the Russian Empire. When once Russia collapsed, these wealthy people declared their, their, their trade. When you hear people talking about blood diamond. Now, the quantities of diamond that came from Eastern Europe were so voluminous tell they have raised eyebrow in eastern europe uh, in western europe since they do not know the origin of of, of these diamonds and cannot and, and see the, the declaration certificate they conclude that these were quantities of diamond that were sold in exchange for arms if a company can employ the services of executive outcome to come with a helicopter gunship to protect the movement of their diamond from their diamond uh, uh, creeks into the helicopters or the ships at, at the port in Sierra Leone, then they must have been making some serious money. Executive outcome is no small uh, paramilitary organization to employ for the use of paramilitary service. So if they, I mean, if they had money, he would employ executive outcome to come here and help him to fight RU, uh, I mean, Lord, that were attacking him from the southeastern border. Or other other places, but executive like outcome was employed by the diamond drilling company in Sierra Leone, uh, which is, I think they said that Tony Blair, brother-in-law, or something, was the head of that company. That's why they have saved everything until uh, blood diamond, blood diamond, blood diamond.
there is no volume of diamond that was traded in this region at that quantity. And in order to have that volume of diamond, it cannot be from Liberia because the diamond processing has to be mechanized. Can't you see reality that for such volume of billions of dollars worth of diamonds to be declared from a country, you have to mechanize it. You have to have a diamond drilling machine as big as, almost as big as this house to be able to mechanize and put the gravel in and wash it to get that volume of billions of dollars worth of diamond. Not from the creeks here, people digging the uh, alluvial mine, and uh, the people digging the, the diamond creek and you say they get billions of dollars worth of diamond. Taylor was trading for RUL arm. If Taylor had a law with power Lofa Bridge, where they will be going? They will never power Lofa Bridge. So are you saying that uh, there were no flow of diamonds from Sierra Leone to Liberia to Mr. Taylor? For what? If Taylor wanted to mechanize down, I'll be high myself. I wanted, I wanted to dredge the Lufa River with a D10 or D9, block the river, dredge it, and try to take the gravel and get a diamond washing plant and wash it because the government needed money. I was, I was interested in that program myself, and I, I wrote a project out, and everything I do, he said, look, I'm mean, not dealing with no diamond business now, but it's a good thing, go discover with the Minister of Lands and Mines. I went there, we could not find people to fund, to fund it. But I was interested in dredging the Lufa River, and I mean, blocking the river, tying the river on both sides, taking a D10 and a D9, dredging the whole river, take the gravel out, and wash it and see if we could put money in the government revenue. That is a program that government, national government should embark upon. This is like Bureau of Natural Resources. That's the resources of our country. If you say the Lofa River have diamond, dread the river, dredge it on both sides, buy a D10 or a D9, which is about half a million dollars, buy the machine and dread the river and take the diamond and wash it. Get a washing plant that is about $180,000 for the washing plant. Wash it and get huge volumes of diamond to, put, to propel our national economy into industrialization. I don't see anything wrong with that. It's not a bad project. 